NASCAR Sprint Cup Racing from Kentucky Speedway on TNT is brought to you by KFC. Today is a KFC day, and today tastes so good. By Sprint, proud sponsor of the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. By Nationwide Insurance, enter this code at codespotter.com for a chance to win one-of-a-kind NASCAR VIP experiences. And by Frost Brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. The cycle of green flag pit stops began while we were away. David Rudeman got it started at lap 72. Kurt Busch, who has led a bunch of laps tonight on pit road at lap 78. Let's follow the stop. Be ready, be ready. Clear all the way out, 4250. Kyle Busch, the race leader, made his pit stop. Landon Castle, the only driver yet to come down the pit lane under green. Last time he pitted, lap 33, so he has inherited the race lead. And you know what happens when we have green flag pit stops? We have pit road penalties. Brian Vickers too fast entering. He had to make a pass-through penalty. Well, let's look back at these green flag pit stops, starting with David Rudeman and Chris Neville. Yeah, right before we went to break on lap 72, David Rudeman came in. He said the car is tight in the center and tight off. So quarter around a wedge out of that car, four tires and fuel. Matt? Kurt Busch chasing his seventh win on a mile and a half racetrack, his biggest hindrance at this point. The car absolutely too tight as he drives it down in the corner. His team made a significant wedge adjustment to try to fix the double deuce, Ralph. Well, the four of Casey Kane, they made an air pressure adjustment and went down a half a round on the jack bolt. And they also put a rubber in the right rear, took four tires and fuel. Still trying to adjust this number four to position where he likes the handling, Marty. Oh, Kyle Busch loves green flag pit stops. Ralph here at Eddie DeHaan calling him into the pit stall. That is his spotter. They link in their lead over his brother, Kurt Busch. The car was just a little bit too loose. Kyle said, if you can get those front tires to work better for me, that would be great. Quarter round up, right rear and wedge. Clint Boyer almost lost it, getting off a four there. Good save, take a breath here. Ten back, five. Boyer right now one lap down, being scored back in the 30th position. Landon Castle gave up the race lead. He makes his pit stop at lap 84. And we look back at what you were talking about. Just there in the frame, just got sideways, getting off the, getting off the corner. And of these guys are, like I said, str struggling with the Cars being loose and just struggling with, with rear grip. But you know, it, it was interesting, you know, what Marty said. You, you talk about Kyle Bush extended his lead over his brother. He's probably, if not the best, one of the top one or two as far as that in lap and that out lap. 
and extending that time. He picks up a couple of seconds coming on the pit road and a couple not actually on pit road itself. It's just through three and four. And when he leaves, he picks up time on the flat of the racetrack. And it's just a second here, a half second there. And all of a sudden, it, you don't have to drive as hard on the racetrack. You let the car do all the work. Kyle's probably as good, if not the best, at doing that. The other thing that I found interesting during that round of the pit stops was when Tony left his pit, you heard Darian Grubbs say, all the way to the 42. The 42 is eight pits away. So he knows eight pits away, you got to go hard all the way back. Obviously, they know where the scoring line is. So timing line. Timing yeah, yeah. line, where the yeah. timing line is. So he had that figured out, and right. he and Tony had talked about it. You can go all the way from there to the 42 car's pit, and then you've got to slow it back down. Casey Kane working on his race car throughout this night. Third right now, and right behind him, Carl Edwards. This happening more than four seconds behind the race leader. And right now is Kyle Busch. He's already got a win this weekend. One here Thursday in truck competition. He's dominating tonight. The NASCAR Sprint Cup Series rolling through the hills of Kentucky on a Saturday night. First ever event here at the Kentucky Speedway for the Cup cars and Kyle Busch wants to put his name on the trophy his advantage over older brother Kurt 4.1 seconds Casey Kane Carl Edwards David Rudman make up the top five and in the sixth position right now Jimmy Johnson Matt success is all about the team earlier in the race Earl Barber the spotter was telling Jimmy he was running lower than anyone on the racetrack to maybe adjust his line to help the race cars handling the car not bad down in one and two his biggest issue entry into three but their biggest problem appears to be their stop on pit road. As we have got to do a better job on pit road. We just got annihilated there. It, you know, that's the thing. Everybody's running so close. I mentioned earlier, the top 10 or 15 guys, I mean, it's like 31.1, 30.12, 31.23. Three. Very, very close. So if you're going to give up a bunch of time on pit lane, this can make the difference tonight, uh, especially if we get long green flag, you know, laps, because Kyle Busch, he just picked up a lot of time, as Kyle mentioned, not on pit lane per se, but getting up to speed and slowing down. Hey, guys, this has been, quite honestly, one of the Achilles heel of Jimmy Johnson's race team all year long is not getting the job done on pit road. I know they've taken on a new format. They basically have practice every week, and Chad Knauss and Steve Letarc post a roster. This is who our pit crew will be this week, and it can change from week to week, but they continue to search, and I think they will for the next nine races till we get to the chase about what is the right pit crew for this 48 car. Yeah, let me ask you something, Larry. You, you, you say it's been an Achilles heel all this year. What about the chase last year when they changed teams halfway through the chase? How long can this team let this be a problem for them? No, you're right. It, it's plagued them much longer than just the 17 races we've had this year. But, but there's, they, they've got to get that fixed if they want to indeed even be a contender for their sixth consecutive championship. Well, Carl Edwards was the point leader entering last week at Daytona. Finished 37th. I think he's battling through the adversity nicely. He drove around Casey Kane like Kane was riding the brakes. Edwards up to third behind the Bush brothers, Kyle and Kurt, who were out front 97 laps in. NASCAR.com's ultimate tailgating vehicle is presented in part by Coors Light. Go to NASCAR.com slash UTV and enter for a chance to win this tricked out tailgate machine and find out where it will travel this summer. Visit NASCAR.com slash UTV and get started. 103 of 267 laps complete here at the Kentucky Speedway. So let's go through the field. Presented by McDonald's, Marty Snyder. Adam, a terrific drive for Kyle Busch so far tonight. And really, should we be surprised that he's out front? We've talked about his teammate, Joey Logano, winning three straight from the pole here in the Nationwide Series. The man on top of the pit box for two of those three wins was Dave Rogers, the crew chief tonight for Kyle Busch here in the Cup Series. He said, I'm in traffic a little bit more in this run, so it's a little bit tighter, but don't make any adjustments, Matt. Impressive run by his brother, Bush the elder Kurt running in second lost the lead on pit road just settling in this team it's like flipping a switch from the start of the season to where we are today he said a couple months ago this team was beating their head against the wall a number of changes made they are really looking forward as we inch ever closer to the chase of making a run at a second championship his car is a little bit on the tight side 
Matt, as promised, in countdown to green, Carl Edwards being a little more aggressive tonight. Terrific with his feedback to Bob Osborne. He said the nose much better in the track than it was yesterday. He said, when I get behind someone, though, I absolutely come to a stop. Carl really stalling out and a little too tight when he's in traffic. Casey Kane is not rolling through the corner fast enough. Marty's having to hold the brake a little too long. They're talking about putting a packer in the front of the car and taking a half pound of air pressure adjustment out of the right front. That's what they're thinking about as they get ready for this next round of pit stops coming up here for Casey King. Chris. Well, David, David Ruman started 17th. He's worked his way up to fifth. He's very happy with the car. He said on the radio, guys, we are as good as anybody through turns one and two, but we're getting beat through turns three and four. The car is still a little bit tight. Matt? Jimmy Johnson's run here in Nationwide. If he says it's apples to oranges, the Nationwide car back when he ran here to the current cup car. The biggest thing is just learning as we go through different cycles tonight. Already looking at the track temperature, we've seen almost a 20 degree change. 115 at the beginning, about 95 right now as he's in the sixth position. Matt, very strong run for Brad Keselowski in the seventh position. And every run, he said it gets better the longer we run at the beginning. It's a little bit too loose. They wanted to fix the entry, and they need a good run. They've only had one top 10 since their win at Kansas. That win came in this same exact race car, Ralph. Marty, the only car faster than the 42 on Pablo Montoya right now is Matt Kenseth in the 17 who's chasing him. Montoya's a little tight. He's better on the longer runs. They haven't made any big adjustments yet, but they're getting ready to on this next stop. Well, early in the race, Matt Kenseth thought he broke a valve spring, but later on, they just realized that the engine was just loading up in the first 10 laps. It's been running great ever since. He said early in the run, the car is loose and then transitions to tight. On that last stop, all they did was an air pressure change. One spot behind him in 10th place. Our points leader, Kevin Harvick. Well, Kevin's been very quiet on the radio since the last pit stop. I haven't heard Kevin at all. He said the car very good before that last pit stop, just a slight air pressure change. Larry? Yeah, I've been watching Kevin Harvick's teammate, Paul Menard, in that 27 car, getting on a little bit of a roll here lately, but he's running about where he qualified. Started back in the 10th, running 11th, looking for that first career win. The guy that got his first career win right behind Paul Menard, David Reagan in that six car. Again, not making a lot of noise here early, started eighth. He's running into 12th, but guys, the driver I've been watching since the drop of the green flag, the winner from Michigan a few weeks ago, Denny Hamlin in that 11 car to the rear of the field because of an engine change with the aid of only one caution. He's on the verge of cracking the top 10, but he needs another caution to kind of make up the rest of that ground. And I'll tell you what, there's going to be a heck of a uh, race for the lucky dog right now. Uh, you got Jeff Gordon, Newman, and Earnhardt right there. The next car, actually Gordon's the next car to go a lap down, but there's some really good cars right now that are being put a lap down. And Jeff Gordon driving as hard as he can right now to stay on the lead lap. Should point out Marcus Ambrose is two laps down now. He had to make another pit stop. He's out of sequence because they didn't get the car full of fuel on that opening stop, stop of the night. And now we got a great battle. Inside the top five, Casey Kane, Jimmy Johnson, David Rudiman all going at it for fourth. Upper corner. Still down there. Let that 48 go, Beak. So Jimmy Johnson had those issues on pit road a while ago. He's back in the top five. Kyle Busch still leading at Kentucky.